Okay. We okay. Uh, so this is a November 15th uh, meeting of the Buildings and Facilities Committee for the Jones Library. Um, seeing the meeting is being recorded, um, seeing presence of a quorum. I'm going to call the meeting to order at 4.15. I'm going to perform a sound check to make sure everybody can uh, hear and be heard. Uh, so with that, George. Yep. Farah. I'm here. And Alex Lefebvre, I am here as well. Um, so pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting can do so by clicking on the live link to this Zoom meeting that can be found on the public meetings calendar on the Town of Amherst website or also on the library website or dialing in by phone. Um, public is able to comment during the public comment segment of the posted agenda by raising their hand. Uh, this meeting is recorded and will be posted to the Jones Library website. So I see that we have two attendees in the audience right now, um, and we don't have the library director today, and I know we potentially were going to have some members of town, uh, Jeremiah LaPlante, um, Stephanie Ciccarello, and uh, Rob Mora, but it doesn't look like they're in attendance today, so should make for a fairly short meeting that I'm guessing. Um, so uh, first thing we have uh, is if someone would make a motion to approve the minutes of October 4th, 2022. Uh, motion we approve the minutes. I second that. Great. Uh, any conversation, question, thoughts, comments on the meeting minutes? No. Uh, so George, uh, uh, do you, how do you vote to approve? Do you vote to approve the meeting minutes of October fourth, twenty twenty? I vote to approve. Okay, Farah. Yes. And Alex votes yes as well. Um, so, uh, public comment is the next section. As I said, we two people um, in the audience. If either of you would like to make a public comment, you can raise your virtual hand, and we will let you into the meeting to make a comment. I see we now have three people and we are in public comment. If someone would like to make a comment, person who just joined, now is the time to raise your virtual hand. Okay, seeing no one. Oh, got somebody. George is gonna bring you into the room if you state your name. Bear with me. Um. There we go. Um, and these. Uh, do I just allow to talk, correct? I think so. There we go. Bob, you're in the room if you want to go ahead and say your name since we're recording the meeting and uh, then go ahead and make your public comment. Hello, I'm Bob Pam. <clears throat> Speaking as myself, <laughs> every no one, nobody else. Uh, a couple of points that, um, since we will be talking about um, things that need to be done now and things that may be done in the future, um, I have uh, made some recommendations to the uh, Jones Library Building Committee of things that I still think might be an improvement. I hope that those have been received by that committee. <clears throat> I have also uh, thought about ways in which those might also be applicable here. Um, I had asked um, the director to arrange a, a tour of the building so that I could have a clearer idea of the way in which the uh, uh, environmental system for the special collection works. Um, I believe that the system that currently serves it is on the roof above uh, the special collections and that it has been a leaky and not terribly a func functional system. Um, it has seemed to me that since that is a limited amount of space, which is similar to the amount of space in a large home that the kind of systems which have been recommended for 
uh, homes, which are heat pumps, which have no water uh, components and consequently can't leak, and which are small and which are uh, fairly effective both uh, for heating and cooling, that that might be a reasonable way to replace uh, the system that we have been using. Uh, can't judge that because I have not been up there to take a look at the way in which it is currently structured. But in any case, uh, that, is, that is a thought that I've had with respect to the current situation, which has meant that uh, the special collections has been of limited availability for now a couple of years. Um, in particular, if it turns out either under plan A or plan B, whether the building is uh, reconstructed and expanded or whether it is not, uh, the special collections will remain a uh, consolidated space of limited square footage and a heat pump system there, since we've always been talking about that having its own specialized system, um, still seems to me to be appropriate for a heat pump operation. In particular, um, given that it is unlikely that we are going to be putting up uh, solar panels at any time in the near future, and since it is likely that even if we do, we will still need to be using electricity to uh, supply energy for the building, heat pumps seem to me to be appropriate for this specialized space. It also seems to me that given that the uh, Woodbury room, which is uh, planned to be open during off hours for the rest of the library, rather than continuing to heat and cool to an appropriate level, all of the building during hours when the Woodbury room is open, whether it is the new one or the old one, um, a heat pump for that space might also be appropriate either as a supplemental system or as a primary system during off hours. So that is uh, questions and, and thoughts that I've had about this for some time and I am hoping that uh, some consideration will be given to that. Uh, there is a second question that I have been thinking about and that I will be raising tomorrow, I guess, at the board meeting, which is that uh, just as we have had for the last couple of years, a, a student project involving uh, what kinds of things could be done in the uh, backyard of the library, and which has been fun for the students and which has been of interest to, to town members. It seems to me that it might be appropriate for us also to approach the uh, engineering and architecture uh, departments of UMass and see whether they would have suggestions about uh, whether it's as student projects or in, in other forms for replacing the uh, glass roofing above the atrium. Uh, we have thought about this now for 30 years without having any success. It seems to me that, that a brand new uh, set of both students and faculty who are involved with uh, the, the advances in engineering that have occurred over the last 30 years might be a good thing for us to have a look at. And of course, we are thinking about this in the event that one year from now, we have to have a plan in place to deal with it. So those are the two thoughts that I've been having. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Um, any of the other members of the public wish to make a public comment? Okay. Seeing none, I'm going to move on to the next uh, agenda item, which is uh, an update on the delivery van. So, George. Uh, I have no, I don't have a bad update or a good update. Um, the Ford Motor Company has been struggling with supply chain issues. So 
the special orders for this year have been dragging along and I contacted the dealer representative last week. Uh, he had no update for me that there was no uh, positive movement on the order, like it's not being built right now or anything like that. And it's mostly just the supply chain issues have been slowing down manufacturing production. So uh, we won't be seeing it anytime soon. Um, Farah, did you have any? No, what are we doing in the meantime? We are still patching together the old van. Um, it will need an inspection sticker, I believe in February. Um, yeah, we're just, we're just driving it and keeping it together. <laughs> um, so we did a little bit of body work on it to get it to pass inspection last time. So uh, if the new van does not come in before it needs to be inspected, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay. Thanks. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the North Amherst Library Building Project update. Uh, I have not heard any recent updates from Guilford. Um, I know that the foundation for the addition, I believe, is in. Uh, so if you drive by the site, you can actually kind of get a visual as to how big it's going to be. Um, as far as I know, everything is still on schedule. Uh, I don't think anything popped up that is going to slow the project down. Uh, but that is all I have at the moment for, for North Amherst for the project. Um, but it's fun. It's fun to watch the, you know, it's fun to watch the progress, you know, if you happen to drive by that area and, uh, you know, and, and see it, see the progress. It, I don't think it'll be very long before we start seeing a structure there. Thanks. Far no, you're good. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, so the next item is the monthly building and grounds report. I think the only thing that I can report is that the tent is officially down. Uh, we left the frame up again because it's very possible that we may decide that the tent is going to go back up in the spring. Uh, if it's deemed that we want to do that, we'll just have to get uh, another extension on the uh, on the, the the building permit that we had to pull to in order to have that tent up there. Um, but we especially seeing as I was out with an injury, we had DT, DPW graciously helped us take the tent roof and sides down. Um, so yeah, nothing else to report at this point. Uh, and I hired a snowplow contractor, so this is great. <laughs> and is that, would you normally do that, George, or is that because of your injury? Uh, the snowplow contractor? Yeah. Um, I used to do it uh and then i sold my plow truck so we've hired an outside company for the past few years to do the snow plowing uh and we had to hire a new one this year because the one we had last year um there were there were some issues so uh so we're going with a new company they are amherst based and we're in the process of getting the contract settled so just in time too <laughs> yeah. all right any questions comments no, I was going to say just in time for tomorrow, apparently. Yeah. We're That's probably going to get an in. No, yeah, exactly. Um, so, George, I assume there's no um, changes to the, the leak that you're keeping an eye on over the staff lounge. It's same, no. nothing, no changes there. Yeah, yeah, no changes. Okay. Okay. Um, so the last item is the backup building project planning. So I believe you did a tour of the building per our last meeting. So I guess maybe just give us an update on who, I, I was sort of hoping that they would be here and we could talk about next steps, <laughs> but um, maybe you can tell us sort of who, who came and any uh, anything yeah. shared that we should know yeah. about. Uh, we had, um, so it was myself, Sharon, Rob Mora, uh, Stephanie Ciccarillo, uh, Sean Mangano, and uh, Jeremiah. So we took them, we focused on the mechanicals of the building uh, and the atrium itself. Uh, so we basically took them through space by space, showed them the equipment, 
gave a brief overview of its age and what has been replaced and and things like that. And it was a really productive tour. I don't think any of them had been into the depths of the building to see like, you know, they've seen the, the library itself, but they had never been into the bowels of the building and seen the mechanicals before and seen exactly how, how the building was designed to be heated and cooled and the things that were done in the 90s that created a lot of these issues that we're still dealing with to this day. So it was a very productive tour. It was a very eye-opening tour. Um, we did meet with them. Sharon and I met with them last week uh, just for a brief meeting, just to go over what they saw and everything like that. So um, there's no specific plan put in place yet. There, there's right now we're just at the brainstorming phase as to if the construction project doesn't go forward, what would be the first steps for us to do? Uh, so that tour and that meeting were really the first steps for that. Um, but I will say it was very productive. It was very worth, worthwhile to do it uh, because now, now they have a much better idea of the things that we are facing. And if the project doesn't go forward, the things that will have to be dealt with, um, there's certainly no way to put any kind of cost on that right now. Uh, because we don't know what steps we're going to take first, uh, but they have a lot more information than they had a couple weeks ago now. So, so is the expectation that, um, thank you, by the way, for doing that tour, well, and I certainly appreciate that uh, all, all four of them showed up, so that was, that's really nice um, for them to have a firsthand look at the building. Um, do we have a sense of, I mean, I think my hope was that, you know, we would sort of have that group come back to us and we could start to have some conversations about what, you know, a plan B might look like. So I guess, do you have a sense of, you know, are there some things that need to happen before they meet with us or would the next step be for them? To, like what, what's your sense of what should be the next step so that we can? Yeah, I mean, I think they need to look into, um, you know, the first steps are, are going to have to deal with, you know, construction engineers to come in and, and, and look at the existing building and look at the best steps forward. Um, so right now it's figuring out where those costs are going to get paid uh, and when on the calendar we should do those things. So when they're better prepared, I think that they will come before either us or, or the board itself uh, with something more meaningful. They just haven't had enough time to absorb it yet. Mm -hmm. um, but I definitely, I'm definitely encouraged that um, we're going to get a lot of support and help from the town side. Uh, should we have to go forward with the alternate plan? Uh, I think we're going to get, we're going to get a decent amount of help from the town on this aspect. George, had they done a tour like this before? Not I mean, the, not these individuals. No. I mean, yeah. some of them have been through the building just like on, you know, like on, just a tour of the building itself, like the, the programming spaces and the public spaces, but none of them had looked at the equipment before, looked at the mechanicals or anything like that. So this was all very new to all of them. And sorry, this is two part. And did any of them have any like comments or suggestions about what looked like the most, the highest priority? Um, I think it's still it's still a matter of them working. We we all kind of feel that the HVAC is definitely mm -hmm. the number one priority. Um, it's determining if that will entail. Where it's determining what parts can be done separate without encompassing the atrium uh, or kicking in the ADA requirements, things like that. Um, but it, it's pretty generally known that the HVAC is the most important part of it. Um, and they also did add that they were all fairly uh, impressed with how we've held the building together to this point, given the obstacles that we've had. Now that they've had all of those visuals and they see how it's designed, they, they were actually um, quite impressed and appreciative as to how we've been able to hold the building together. 
Thank you. Thank you. That made me feel good. Yeah. <laughs> the unsung hero. Um, uh, Far, did you have other? No, no. Thank you so much, George. So, so George, one of the things, um, so we obviously invited Stephanie Ciccarello along because, you know, in any backup planning we're doing, ideally, you know, we'd like to, we'd like to be doing things right by the environment and, and looking at systems. And I noticed that um, uh, Stephanie and Jeremiah just uh, sent a sustainability statement for procurement. Mm -hmm. Um or not technically a municipal building. So I'm assuming, again, this statement doesn't apply to us, but I mean, in, in an ideal world, we would be, uh, you know, we, we would, anything we do would be following along, you know, with what the town's goals are around, you know, ECAC and the Energy Climate Action Committee. So I don't know um, if that'll be part of the conversation that we have with them. I think it will be. I, I definitely think it will be. Um... You know, I think that they are there. I think they're being very realistic that if we have to, if we have to go forward with an alternate plan, that we do whatever we can to make it as efficient as possible. Um, you know, I don't think, you know, the cost will be a factor, of course, you know, we won't have as much opportunity as we will with the expansion project, but it's definitely on their radar, uh, looking into things that could possibly be done to make it more efficient this time around. Yeah, and I know I had reached out to Stephanie Ticarello um, because um, there are some other libraries that had used um, the clean, I think it's clean towns, green energy, I don't remember off the top of my head, there are certain funds that are set aside. Mm -hmm. um, and my understanding was that you can only submit a project every two years under that. And right now they're looking at the schools. And so I guess kind of the, the, the initial information I got was that town has all of their green priorities lined up and we probably wouldn't be able to access any green town funds that are coming in but I, it'd be nice i just want to make sure that stephanie continues to be part of the conversation so that if there is something available that we can try to get access to it oh yeah ab absolutely i mean if anything she's a wealth of information um you know she's been doing this for municipalities for quite some time and um you know i think if there's anything out there that we aren't aware of she would find it for us yeah well, I mean, one of the nice things about this is, you know, having having Jeremiah Robbins and and Stephanie is that, you know, we become part of the town planning in the sense of knowing 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 where we're going to fit, right? So if the project doesn't go through, ideally at the end of this, we'll have a sense for, you know, where where are we in, you know, the priority in terms of receiving green funds in terms of when things might be done and so that'll be yeah so. yeah absolutely that'll be a great conversation to have when they do come forward when, when, when they do come to us to to present whatever they've got you know is to just make sure that they know that that's something that we have our eyes on um that that we definitely want to have that conversation so do we know timing wise when they expect because i feel like we're somewhat in a hold pattern until we hear back from them like ideally it seems like the next step is we sit down with them and they share with us, you know, here's what we saw, here's what we think, here's what we would, you know, offer up for suggestions. Yeah, I mean, I think um, based on the conversation we had, I would think that we should hear something from them within the next few weeks. Yeah. Um, they just didn't have, they didn't have the information they needed to come forward with anything that would be meaningful. Okay. So yeah, I would. I I think optimistically, probably within a few weeks, we should hear from them. Oh, so ideally, at our next meeting, they I might think so. Yeah. Them. Okay. Good. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Fabulous. Good. Um. So, speaking of that, I guess do we? I don't know what times. I mean, I would really, I'd love for them to be at our next meeting. So, if changing dates or times to accommodate their schedules is the way to go, I mean, I'm happy to. I don't know your thoughts, Farah, but I, I feel like. Sure. 
Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm totally on board with that too. Um, you know, if, if we hear from them that they, that, that they want to meet, I mean, maybe it'll be putting together a Google poll to try to find a day when everybody's available. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah I, I would definitely, I'd be fine with moving meeting times around uh, okay. in order to make that happen. Yeah, so our next our next building facilities is tentatively for, um, I believe, December 20th. And I can do a 9 a.m. far if that works better for you. That would be amazing. <laughs> George, does that work for you? Are you gonna where, where are you gonna be, George? Do you know? Um I'm I'm hoping uh because there is the little tricky thing that I, I am having surgery and I will be on FMLA leave. And I'm working with HR right now to ensure that I can at my soonest possibility continue to do my work from home. Yeah. But I don't know when that I don't know where that date is gonna set. Okay. Uh, my surgery is on the 30th. But let me just check my. Why don't, why don't we just put December twentieth, nine a.m. as as a placeholder, which it already yeah. is in my calendar. Um, at night, moving back to nine a.m. and then, as we hear from folks from the town and you know your schedule, then we'll yeah, firm that up. But that's the date we'll hold for now. Yeah, that's that sounds good to me. Okay, and it's the twentieth, right? Is that what you said? I have December twentieth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I'm not a lot. I think. I mean, is there anything else, George? Any our next like, topics not anticipated by the chair? No, nothing that I can think of off the top of my head. Okay. All right. Well, again, I really appreciate you. Uh, we really appreciate you doing the tour for the folks in town, and I'm very. Very interested to hear what they have to say, both in terms of funding sources as well as suggestions for how to proceed. And yeah, and 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 putting some kind of schedule in place so that we can at least report back to the board that what the timeline is going to look like for, and, and especially because we're supposed to, I think, report into the town as well. I think was that. Yeah. Thanks. Agreement was to check in with the town, but I mean it's in the town's lap at this point, and Sean's part of that. So right, exactly. I mean the the the, the people involved with that are also involved with this. So yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> they won't be going back on their own work. <laughs> good. Okay. Uh, good luck with your surgery, George. Yeah, thank good you. luck, George. Thank you. Yeah, we're we're gonna get through this. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you all. Thank you to the members. Thank you. Thank you, Rob, for your comments. And we will see you next time. Bye. Meeting adjourned. Thanks. Meeting adjourned. Bye.